Hey yo, what's good everybody? It's Dino here and we're back with another video full of crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everybody's doing well. Today we got a whole bunch of clips. So let's hop right into it. Look in one day and saw you think, oh God, I can't stop. Look in one day and saw you think, oh God. I mean, that's really, really creepy, but I, I guess at least he's honest about it. I, I don't know. It turns out what the ancients were trying to tell us is that Earth is actually made up of two planets, one 6,000 years old and the other 4.5 billion years old. And these two Earths are of different energy states. One is a very high energy state, one a low energy state. In the scriptures, they're called a spirit Earth and a temporal Earth. One day, this day, right now, 21st century, they would come apart. Well, what do you mean, come apart? Physically? Yes. Physically, the higher vibrational Earth would become dissident with the lower vibrational Earth, and they would separate, just like the human spirit separates from the human body. Earth is about ready to either go through birth or go through death. Predicting that planet Earth is going to split physically, are you? Not split down the middle. It's more like phase apart. Two whole planets will go separate ways in space. One higher vibrational, one lower vibration. Literally? Yes. What does that do to all of us on this planet? All of us, obviously, are going to be divided. We are going to choose which Earth to go with. The ones that will align themselves with the higher vibration or spiritual Earth will become unaware of the darker and more temporal but more murderous of spirits. That's some pretty cool stuff right there. Like when you really get down into it and you think about it, like there is a change happening. How to explain it? I don't know. I don't know about all that. That's pretty crazy. This is the kind of thing that they train for and they are ready to go. That's obviously going to be magnified uh, on, on, a, on a much bigger scale, but there's going to be people stuck in traffic. Uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of use of cell phone networks. Uh, so we want to make sure that folks uh, have paper maps if they're going into areas they're not familiar with, because you might not be able to rely on getting a cell signal uh, and being able to navigate that way. To help with the influx of people, Governor Kate Brown authorized the Oregon National Guard to deploy soldiers to help. Anything from medical support, to aviation support and firefighter suppression support, or excuse me, fire support. Um, those are all missions that we're anticipating we may assist with. And we're more than happy to assist with these. You know, we're members of the community and we're happy to help the citizens of Oregon. It's the kind of stuff the National Guard is prepared to handle. In the military, we train and train and train and prepare ourselves for these types of situations where we do get to get to respond and put our training to use. And when we get to do this real world, it absolutely is a thrill for us. We love supporting mm. and being able to be here in Oregon and, and help out. There is also concern about fire danger. As it turns out, this is going to be the height of the wildfire season. It has been very dry throughout the summer. Uh, the reason that's happening is because all the influx of travelers that are going to come from all over the place are going to be like buying everything at all the stores that are along the path of totality. They're going to be using all the, buying all the gasoline. They're going to be uh, staying at all the hotels and all the Airbnbs. And there's going to be like a whole bunch of traffic and rental cars, people driving in and just all kinds of stuff like that. And so 
they're telling everyone to prepare for like just in case something happens uh it's not meant to be fear-mongering y'all republican friends tell me we're spending a lot of money it's saving billions of dollars it's saving billions of dollars we're actually cutting the deficit too mm. version of a social credit system oh yes definitely yeah, that's and that high, would, highly probable and that it will be accepted by many people because again that they won't even yearning notice. for safety that they won't notice it you, you can't believe how much people don't know these things. When I went to the UK, I talked to some people from the House of Lords. This is within the last six months. The most astute of the people sitting in the House of Lords had only become aware of the woke movement in the last 18 months. Oh yes, you just can't believe how much this is not on people's radar. Not Someone like you can't believe that at all because it's on your radar all the time. That's not, you live in a world that's on the cutting edge of this sort of thing. So. People have no idea. It's like, well, why not have a digital passport? I mean, you know, how convenient. It's like, fair enough, and you can understand that. Wouldn't it be nice if we could pay for everything with our phones? It's like, wouldn't it be nice if the central government, who's woke-oriented and makes carbon dioxide remediation the priority, knows exactly what you spend on everything so they can target you tax-wise with precision? It's like, oh, didn't think about that. Like, yeah. Yeah, you sure didn't. Oh yes, it's highly probable it would be a miracle if we if we escape from that. You can see these signs of this everywhere. You know, when you go through airports now, there's a lot of automated barriers. You show your passport. It's like, well, these are automated barriers. What if you can't go through them? Well, that's the situation for many people in China. It's like, what are you going to do? You're going to argue with the machine? Like, you just cannot imagine how screwed you are. There isn't, it's way worse than anything Kafka ever imagined. Because at least with Kafka, there was bureaucrats, faceless though they may have been, they were at least still human. Once the machines can lock you out, oh, 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 you are in such trouble. Yeah. And we're speeding towards that with, uh, with an immense lack of, of care. Yeah. yeah, we're not even... We're just like, yeah, give it to us, give it to us, give it to us. And uh, people don't even, they're not paying attention enough. National Guard is going to be here now for the solar eclipse. Well, yeah, because it's a big deal. Last one was in 2017 and the next one's not until like 2044. So what's it going to look like? That's going to look like a lot of those small towns in the path of totality that have like 100,000 people living in it are going to see a population boom overnight of two to 300,000 of people just coming, trying to get in the path of totality to get the best pictures and stuff. So do you have local law enforcement to provide coverage for 300,000 people? You probably don't. So the governor's activating the guard and reserves to help out. Is your cell phone network built up enough to provide service for 300,000 people? It's probably not. So cell phone service is going to be bogged down or drop out altogether. Is that local Walmart and gas station stocked to provide service for 300,000 people? Probably not. So all that people that travel, they're going to take all your food and gas and then you're stuck with nothing. So stock up. See, he's saying what I was saying. That's exactly how it's going to be. And that's the whole, that's what it is. That, that's what it is. And that would be done by taking hypnotism out of the realm of the occult and introduce it as a new science for the benefit of mankind. They could then use people of great renown, educators, people of capacity. The third point was what? Was to destroy the Bible without burning it. Okay. See. And what was the strategy on that? On that, that Satan would tutor Charles Darwin personally in setting up yeah. Uh. Hmm. Uh, I wish that would have played a little bit more so that I could see the context of where he was going. Trust the science, they said. Scientists believe that the Sahara Desert was once a lush, fertile land filled with lakes, rivers, and cities 6,000 years ago. Medieval maps of the area move that timeline up drastically. Some of these maps show a forest-like habitat up to the 18th century. These maps do not sit well with scientists and historians. Copper door handles were found in a 300 million year old coal seam. The average coal seam is located at a depth of one kilometer.
something doesn't add up. Mexico and Egypt have a ton of similarities. They say the cultures had no contact. I don't know, you be the judge. In the 1960s, the Sword of Guojian was found in China from the 5th century BC. This sword is made from a very unique alloy. Its scabbard in which it is stored is fitted so perfectly that it becomes airtight when it's sheathed. The alloy consists of bronze, copper, tin, lead, and iron added sulfur. Towards the center of the blade there is more copper, making the sword more flexible. Along the edges there is more tin, making the edge very durable. I'm not a blacksmith, but I don't think this sword can be made with an anvil, hammer, and chisel. There's the info. You decide for yourself. Like and follow for more. I don't know, that's pretty cool though. Like, I'd love to see that blade. I'd love to see it because like, I'd, yeah, I bet it looks really cool. Mm. She walked in the house and somebody that's been stalking her was in her house and had let her pet out. Like, that's crazy. This eclipse coming on April 8th, 2024 is suspicious as shit, and I got several reasons why. Let's get into it. Number one, it's going to pass over the New Madrid fault line. This area is over 125 years due for a massive earthquake. Back in the 1800s, an eclipse passed over this exact same area. A few days later, we had a massive earthquake with several aftershocks. My second reason why I find it suspicious as shit, look at all of the planets that are going to come into conjunction either right before the eclipse or right after the eclipse. It's giving Hercules Titans moment, look. Because not only do we have all of these planets line up in conjunction, and we have an eclipse coming, we have the Devil's Comet that's gonna be visible during the 2024 eclipse. Now it's going to be brightest in June of 2024, but it will be visible with the naked eye during the eclipse. All of this put together is suspicious as shit. Now, once again, it's giving Hercules when all the planets line up and the Titans come out of the Earth and Hades has to direct them to Mount Olympus. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to try to get some pictures of the eclipse with my camera, uh, the one that we're using here. Uh, I just got to figure out how to cover the lens. Uh, I don't want to damage it. I had we found out that my trainer was a MK Ultra uh, Canadian uh, he intelligence. Was a, he worked in the defense research and uh, development uh, in the Canadian military, essentially working on psyops Who's in this the guy? Canadian military. This is Harley Pasternak. <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is, look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me, and they, 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 when I asked them how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly, it took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount, right? And I refused to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here, and it would have been, whoa, is he was deeply troubled. We miss him. We love his music, though. Well, they would have Britney Spears too. I mean, look, they, they would have Michael Jackson. Oh, oh, oh. I kind of believe him about a lot of that stuff some of it's a little bit out there but you know a lot of it i kind of believe him Yeah, I'd be tripping out too. I would probably just leave. <laughs> Man, did y'all see where they got the toxicology report back for those three Chiefs fans that they found dead outside in the freezing ass cold? Apparently, they may or may not have ingested fent. And look, here's the thing. If you're not going to test your substances, you got to test them the old-fashioned way, which is you wait for somebody else to do some, and then if they don't die, then you do some. You gotta, you can't be too eager to get it. No, God, please, no, no! Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Do not do what he just said. Don't, don't do that. In there. And that's the thing, even if you like, if you got a kilo of damn cocaine and it's fucking, let's say, conservatively, you know, 96% pure or something, you know, a little, a little something like that. But that 0.01% is fentanyl, 
that doesn't come up when you test of the tiny bit, if there's any bit in there, I mean, it's going to fucking, it, it'll kill you if you're not doing it. It's a damn dangerous game out there, man. The cat's been let out of the bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is pretty dangerous out there. This is the Chinese government's way of shaming its population into accepting the social credit system. The question is will the UK and rest of the world soon be dominated and controlled by similar manipulative algorithms? They display anyone who scores under a certain number to embarrass and shame both them and their family. Yeah, they do do that. Uh, don't jaywalk or really don't do anything over there. Uh, it's coming to us soon. I personally believe this is one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time. I am really shocked that we didn't even learn this in school. This is some this is some next level stuff, and it was verified to be true. Dr. Masaru Emoto. And what he discovered was, you know, when you speak to the water and you say certain things like, I love you, or, you know, you're my friend. Or beautiful. Yeah, even, beautiful. Yeah. Angel. It could be simple. Just like angel, happiness, peace. When you say these positive words to the water and then you freeze it, it makes beautiful shapes. Most of the time, they're symmetrical. They look yeah. like, like you beautiful. You Google images. They have photos of this. They look like snowflakes, like beautiful, symmetrical snowflakes. Now, when you say mean, nasty words to the water, and then they freeze the water, it would make ugly, repulsive shapes. Asymmetrical. Yeah, like cracks and looks like damage. Bubbles. And he basically proved that, like, your consciousness and your will combined with the intention behind your words affects reality. Mm -hmm. It's like the concept that, like, your words are magic. So much so that you change physical reality. Yeah, it is quite literally proof that the things that come out of your mouth change reality. affect your physical surrounding. You know, didn't God tell us that? Once you start to understand that what you think about is what expands and becomes your life, you start getting real careful about what you think about. So that when you have a thought that says, gee, I got a sniffle, it's in my nose, but uh, tomorrow it'll probably be down here in my throat. Don't do that. And on Wednesday, it's probably going to be here in my chest. Always seems to happen this way. And on Thursday, I'm going to have a fever. I get one every time. You can just about count on it. I'm going to have to take Friday off. <laughs> now, it's Monday morning, and you got a sniffle, but in your mind, in your thoughts, you're taking Friday off with a fever, and lo and behold, your body begins to react to this thought, which is just a mistake of the intellect to begin with. Yeah, it is. It is. That's exactly what it is. Oh, I love it. You have been paid 2,000 central bank digital tokens. The following fees are being deducted. Accommodation fee. Food ration fee. Recycling fee. Clean energy fee. Personal greenhouse gas emissions fee. Climate change fee. Diversity fee. Your current remaining balance is five central bank digital tokens, and if not spent, it will expire in seven days. During research for our best-selling book, On the Path of the Immortals, I was given the unprecedented opportunity to sit down with and to film Dr. Don Mose Jr., a third generation medicine man who I met with for a large part of a day during our investigation, who told me the oldest legends of the Anasaze, which he had been told by his great grandfather, who likewise had been told by their ancestors, which included stories of the Anasaze turning to sorcery, sacrifice, and cannibalism after they lost their way and were driven insane by a reptilian creature which they depict with a halo above his head. Uh, images of that being are, by the way, included in the petroglyphs that we filmed inside the canyons, and I believe that they likely attest to the fallen reptile or reptiles of biblical fame, which also misled humanity. Anyway, as I said in the traditional Hogan at one of the Navajo schools Dr. Don Mose teaches at, he began drawing in the sand on the floor and reciting the first part of the story of the ancient Anasaze and how it had been repeated to him by his 
father and grandfather who had also been told by their ancestors and so on uh, a legend that Dr. Mose alone had undoubtedly repeated hundreds of times before at the Navajo School. Now, since it was obvious to us that this Navajo historian was really indifferent to our camera and our recording plans, and in fact I could tell he was really uncomfortable with us putting him on film, but thankfully he let us proceed nevertheless. But I sat there and listened respectfully as he proceeded for nearly... Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I've been to a few of the reserves around the United States and like oh man oh man they got some stories they got some stories amazing stories things you would not believe but like they're cool so in china for example god this is going to happen here i think too although maybe people will fight it if a traffic camera catches you jaywalking in china the digital id system has you it has your blood now it has your genetic code it has your photograph it can identify how you walk so even if you can't see of a face you can be picked up by gate it will convict you of jaywalking and take money out of your bank account with no intermediating judiciary at all and show a picture of you to the people in the neighborhood so they know that you have jaywalked and reduce your social credit score and if your social credit score falls below a certain level then you can't buy drinks from a vending machine you can't play video games you can't go on a train you can't get out of your 15 minute city all that's already in place in china mm -hmm. and it's on its way here we're the only nation in the world divided and defined defined every other nation is defined based on geography or, or ethnicity we're the only nation based on an idea think about it bro this man these soldiers really see demons. Although the development of night vision technology began before World War II, widespread use of it didn't begin until the Vietnam War. You see, the first generation of passive night vision devices were called starlight scopes that used a red spectrum instead of green, effectively allowing American soldiers to see at night. However, when helicopter gunners were given these scopes to wear during evening missions, disaster struck. According to one helicopter pilot's account, the gunner on board was looking into an area that had nothing in it during the mission, but began firing wildly anyway, causing the other helicopters in their flotilla to respond, making them shoot one. When the pilot asked what he was firing at, he explained that he was seeing flying demons coming right toward them. But this wasn't the only incident where something similar happened. Other soldiers using these goggles would report seeing demons in the air and monsters in the jungle perched on the trees watching them. One even described it as looking straight into hell. Eventually, soldiers and officers were ordered to stop using these goggles, and these scopes were removed from service. And in the end, many were discharged due to having psychological breaks after using this technology. So, did these goggles allow us to see into another realm? And... Did those goggles even exist, y'all? I gotta go look that up. You literally can't believe the facts Tucker Carlson tells you. You heard her. Don't believe the facts. Believe the spin. The spin. I think that was Operation Bluebird. <laughs> so let's so let's talk about spiritual stalking. This gets deep. This is part one that nobody really kind of speaks on or talk about. You ever get that feeling like you feel like you're being watched or somebody's constantly astral projecting to you like you'll look at the corner of your eye you'll see a splash of somebody watching you or somebody is stalking you in your dreams or doing sexual activities in your dreams it could also be a sign of spiritual stalking another way that they can really get to you easily say for instance you're looking at a video and you or you're looking at something random and you see like weird messages popping up in your screen or anywhere you look and you're kind of questioning why are you seeing this repeatedly ask that person telepathically why are you stalking me and what do you want from me and watch how you expose their light from behind closed doors and see their true colors mm. I don't know what to say about that.
they're saying that it's uh, clones now, multiple. That smells like ass. Dude, oh, that's disgusting! You ruined my day! I'm telling the boss! No, dude. Position. I mean, he's yeah, he can't incapable work. of making money yeah. anymore. No, he can't work. He, he has a real issue. Yeah. He's act it's actually very advanced, it's and they think this is toward. We're at the close to the end. Oh my god! Yeah, That's I follow crazy. his daughter Tallulah. So, no, Bruce Willis didn't sell his likeness to a deep fake company. Despite initial reports, the deep fake company does not own the rights to Bruce Willis' likeness. <clears throat> uh, Partially because that's literally not possible, the company said Willis appeared in a recent advertisement through Deep Cake, which managed to create a digital twin of Willis that can appear in new content despite the actual Willis retiring from acting as a result of aphasia, a brain disorder that hinders cognition and speech abilities. I like the precision of my character, Willis said of the process, according to the quote in Deep Deep Cake website. It's a great opportunity for me to go back in time. The neural network was trained on content of Die Hard. That's crazy. They really are out here cloning, yo. You don't. You don't understand. They're doing it with AI at this point. You don't know what you're seeing because you don't know if those people are actually alive or not anymore. Porters, broken women. Broken girls, perverts, predators, they know, and that's who they go after. And my mother had been abused incestuously by a family member when she was a child, and it broke her. Her, her thinking was never correct. Her processes didn't work. Her value for herself was this was the best she deserved. Unfortunately, the abuse with her didn't stop, but it was transferred to her kids too. I've never said this before, like ever, but I'm just going to say it. There was a government funded operation called Project Bluebird and it was approaches to help change people's minds, controlling. And my stepfather was in counterintelligence in the army and we know he was trained in that. I would never say that I was a subject of it, you know, government funding. But what we do know is what he did to me was textbook of what they would do to people. Mm. That's wild. I want to hear more about his story. This is what our kids are doing these days. Okay. <laughs> he didn't look very happy about that. One AI program spoke in a foreign language it was never trained to know. This mysterious behavior called emergent properties has been happening, where AI unexpectedly teaches itself a new skill. One. That's why. With no pilot to compromise performance, even more unusual craft and propulsion systems have been designed and tested. This incredible machine was originally designed to shoot down nuclear missiles and satellites. Yeah! Just 12 inches long, gyroscopically balanced, and with thrusters at key points around its body, it is capable of instant changes of direction. Cover! Cover! Cover tracking. Cover. Roll. Woo! All right. No airplane could ever catch this machine. Oh, that's really cool. It's old, but it's really cool. So what happened with you where you decided or you took on a more fatalistic attitude? Like, what was there any specific thing or was it just the inevitability of our future? I tried to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. Nobody listened. No one. Are people more inclined to listen today? It seems like an issue that's brought up more often over the last few years than it was maybe five, ten years ago. It seemed like science fiction. Maybe yeah. I will. 
So far they haven't. I think people don't like the normally the way that regulations work. It's very slow. So slow indeed. So usually there'll be something, some new technology will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee. There will be rulemaking. Then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. It can't take ten years from the point which is dangerous. Yep, 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 yep. He's been saying that forever though. I don't know what y'all think about that eclipse, but I already explained my thoughts. And I know some physicists don't like me talking about this theory, but it is a theory, you know, like, so the holographic principle, which was originally conceived to explain how information is encoded on an event horizon of a black hole, which is a distance away from the singularity of a black hole where if you cross it, you're fucked because you're going to get ripped to shreds or you're not coming back. And uh, that principle talks about how information basically from higher dimensional space can be encoded in lower dimensional space. And the easiest example is like us casting a shadow on a sidewalk, right? Three dimensional object. 2D shadow on a sidewalk. If you lived in two-dimensional space, flatland, you'd be tripped out. What the fuck am I seeing? But they just don't know that it's really just a person in higher dimensional space. So as some of the, I mean, obviously we have physical material that's in three-dimensional space that we've recovered, but at least maybe some of the phenomenon is really operating in higher spatial dimensions, but is either being projected or quasi-projected into our 3D plus time space, which is really trippy to think about, but we literally do it on a day to day basis, like casting shadows. So, and that might be some of what we're seeing too. Some interesting stuff right there. Like, what if what we're seeing we just can't explain because we don't understand that dimensional wavelength, or like that frequency, those dimensions? This is one of the smugglers. He, he lets, they saw down pieces of our fence, right? And then he shrugs and gives a salute. He shrugged because he's like, what are y'all going to do? I'm getting paid. The California border is getting out of control. Thousands of Chinese nationals are crossing the southern border. Why did you come? Take a money. Money? Yeah. I saw the next phase of the border crisis, and it's in California, but it's different, Todd and Carly, than what we saw in Texas, where Governor Abbott has put up the razor wire, those shipping containers to lock down and harden our border in places like Eagle Pass. Out there in Hakumba, California, it's wide open, and California is a sanctuary state. Meaning by law, the city officials and local police law enforcement cannot cooperate with people like Border Patrol and ICE to detain migrants. On January 1st, California became the first state to offer free health insurance to illegal migrants. Of the 21,000, we've been reporting 20,000. I'm here to tell you right now, it's more than 21,000 Chinese nationals have crossed the southern border since the uh, fiscal year began on October 1st. More than 20,000 of the 21,000 in that San Diego sector right there. That's why that individual I spoke to said, hey, I'm here for the money. And as you know, uh, just getting a job or better life does not qualify for asylum. Mm-hmm. That is true. It doesn't qualify for asylum. Yeah, that's that wildfire that happened. Uh, not good. If you had asked me 10 years ago, I would have said, first, AI is going to come for blue-collar labor, basically. It's going to drive trucks and do factory work, and you know it'll handle heavy machinery. Then, maybe after that, it'll do like some kinds of cognitive labor, uh, kind of, you know, but not. it won't be off doing what I think of personally as the really hard stuff. It won't be off proving new mathematical theorems, won't be off, you know, discovering new science, um, won't be off writing code. And then eventually, maybe, but maybe last of all, maybe never, because human creativity is this magic special special thing, last of all, it'll come for the creative jobs. Now, A, it looks to me 
like and for a while, AI is much better at doing tasks than doing jobs. It can do these little pieces super well, but sometimes it goes off the rails. Uh, it can't keep like very long coherence. So people are instead just able to do their existing jobs way more productively. Um, but you really still need the human there today. And then B, it's going exactly the other direction. You could do the creative work first, mm -hmm. stuff like coding second. Uh, they can do things like other kinds of cognitive labor third. And we're the furthest away from like humanoid robots. Yeah, it's true. We're really far from humanoid robots. Uh, at this point, we're just starting to learn how to utilize AI as tool sets within different careers and professional paths. So. Porque, eh, 16 de diciembre, 11 de la noche. Bueno, mira, esta wea está pasando hace mucho rato y yo acá estoy sola, wea. No hay nadie. Concha tu padre, no hay nadie. Concha tu padre. Mm -mm. That would be terrifying. Ladies working alone at a hospital at night. And the wheelchair in the lobby just starts rolling around. No, 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 no. I'm going home right there. Look at that. That's cool. That's very unfortunate. I'm so sorry that that happened to all of you guys. Lord, please be there with these people for their trying times. They need it. A month away from the April 8th solar eclipse, Travis County issues a disaster declaration. Officials expect to see big crowds, traffic, and a strain on first responders, hospitals, and roads. That's what we're trying to uh, put resources in place for, to direct traffic, extra, extra law enforcement on the streets out in those areas, extra signage, mm -hmm. uh, working with Waze and Google to try to pre pre-identify and, and map routes that people can take safely into and out of the area. Private property owners in unincorporated areas are required to let the county know if they plan to host a gathering with more than 50 people. That's so first responders can prepare accordingly. We're making the declaration today. It's going to be in effect until the 8th because we're requiring that registration and those other measures until the 8th. Um, the court ratifying that today will keep it into effect. Del Valley ISD announcing Friday they're canceling classes on April 8th, joining these districts that will close that day. Other districts like Austin ISD are using the day as an educational event. The county says there are no plans to close roads. Some parks require reservations and many are already filled up. We want to make sure even when we were talking specifically around potential challenge points going into and out of the parks, the goal is going to be to keep the traffic moving uh, as free flow as possible. Hayes County is closing their county offices that day except for public safety ones. No matter where you are, leaders say avoid non-urgent appointments that day. Stock up on groceries and gas beforehand and download the What Three Words app to make it easier for first responders to find you. Look, they're trying to make it sound scary. Don't let it be scary. Just make sure you're prepped up for a few days. You've got your stuff 
set up for in case the power goes out. You're prepared for in case your cell phones and internet go slow or stop working altogether. Just be prepared for a lot more traffic. Be prepared for a whole bunch of strangers that don't belong just running around in your city. So that's what you gotta be. That's that's it. They're, they're not like... It doesn't need to be a fear thing. It just needs to be like, look, a whole bunch of terrorists are coming. Get ready. Yeah, it's pretty wild because it actually has been like that out here. It's it's crazy. Solar eclipse means judgment is coming upon a nation. No, it's not. No, it's not. This is the Ashago bone. It's one of the earliest mathematical devices known to man. And while we can't say for sure, this is very likely used to help track the movements of the stars and the moon and the planets in the heavens. There have been eclipses for thousands of years, and people have been sure that something terrible was going to happen each and every time. And each and every time, it hasn't. You are going to hear a lot of conspiracy theories and religious garbage about the eclipse. I just want you to remember, nothing has ever happened before, and it's not going to happen this time. But I've got my solar glasses. I hope you enjoy the eclipse. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the eclipse as well. And don't worry, it's not going to be some crazy judgment day or something. I mean, that would have to affect the whole world, not just one area. You understand me? Anyways, uh, well, that's what we got. That's another video we can drop in the archives. I appreciate every single one of you that come through every time I do one of these lives or drop a new video. You know, it really helps out. It helps us get boosted in the algorithm. The more that you guys interact, hit the like button, shoot, even the dislike button. You know, it doesn't really matter if you don't like the video, dislike it. If you like it, like it. Leave some comments. Tell me why you don't like it. Tell me why you like it. You know, things like that. Anyways. I appreciate everybody for hanging out. I hope all of you are doing well, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Until next time, peace.